The climate is heating up, but the demand for transport is not slowing down. To radically reduce CO2 emissions and still meet the growing demands of modern society, new solutions are needed. The International Transport Forum predicts that the demand for transport will almost triple towards 2050. At the same time, the current modalities are already responsible for about 30% of all greenhouse gases in the developed world. This means that we cannot accommodate the growth in demand sustainably by only investing in the existing modalities. CO2 emissions from transport will increase 16% by 2050, even if today's commitments to decarbonize transport are fully implemented. The expected emissions reductions from these policies will be more than offset by increased transport demand. So you need to make way for more transportation, whereas is bigger airports, more rail lines, wider highways, whichever you choose, you have to do that if you want to maintain mobility. The current modalities, all of them, are already pushed to their limits. So we really need to add Hyperloop as an additional modality re-evaluate the purpose of all the other existing and new modalities and then repurpose existing infrastructure budgets to realize this future-proof transport vision. The World Economic Forum has recognized Hyperloop as a new key market for global economic transformation. Hyperloop is already included in the U.S. Infrastructure Bill, in regional transportation plans in India and the Middle East, and the European Sustainable and Smart Mobility Strategy. The European Commission has set a certain amount of policy for innovation in the field of mobility, and they included Hyperloop as one of the promising modes of uh, transportation. Europe is leading uh, the standardization work, so within the European Standards Organizations, there is a technical committee, the JTC20 it's called, where participants from several European countries, but also US and Canada are participating. And they work on specific items which should prepare the whole industry to work towards a single European standard for Hyperloop. And after that's done, we can start building the first commercial route. Uh, that will be the start of the international Hyperloop network. Piece by piece, a picture is emerging from this development puzzle, a global Hyperloop network. We're looking at a couple of potential routes. Hart is based in the Netherlands, so we predominantly have looked in the Netherlands or in Europe, but we're expanding our view more and more globally as well. Uh, we're looking into Germany for routes, the US and the Middle East. Hyperloop enables sustainable economic growth, but there is an even greater social impact. By joining distant regions to each other with direct connections, short-haul flights could become a thing of the past. Hyperloop will actually remove the boundaries. We will be able to travel uh, at any place within a very short time and uh, be able to work at any place without encountering or thinking of the travel time. Another interesting application is optimizing our e-commerce shipments. If you connect the Hyperloop system to places uh, where you can put fulfillment centers, but it's not necessarily within the same day or next day reach of, of cities, you can bring the parcels directly from these fulfillment center hubs into the cities without adding traffic to our existing highway system. So when we manage to bring this technology to market, it's going to be so empowering for people. It's going to really change our lives, perhaps in the same way as a mobile technology did.